Hello again, limousine collectors. Today we have the M2 auto stretch rods of the 1958 Chevy Impala. So, it's an old casting, an old toy. It says released one, die cast 164, eight year olds and up. Tires are rubber. Body bag cast iron ink. Okay. They do tell you what other castings are in the series. There's only six castings that I can research of limousines from M2 machines and uh, eventually I'll get one of each a couple features I like how there's a cutout here you can actually see the doors open through that you know plastic interesting uh, so yeah copyright down here says 2008 so that's how old this guy is so whoever kept this kept it pretty nice the the plastic is still clear it's not yellowed Dave Chang design so obviously that's the designer of this casting I'm gonna assume or is it the graphics? I don't know. Maybe, well, maybe both. Let's see. I kind of want to preserve this blister so I can bring it back on an airplane. But let's see if I can... Well, I don't think I can. I'm to cut it here. Right here. right there and then it's on this big plinth or base or whatnot and it's got the uh, M2 logo up there a diamond plate pattern oh the M2 logo is on all four corners and diamond plate I like that tells you what the car is and I'm not sure what the 0805 means 2008 number five from that year maybe okay hmm. two screws yeah no sensitive parts, so I'm going to take it off the base. So, the 19, 1958 was the very first year for the Chevy Impala, and it was to help promote General Motors' 50th year of produ producing vehicles. I believe they came out with a new model for each of their brands. Sorry, I had to get the bigger screwdriver. You gotta use the right screwdrivers or you're gonna strip out the screw head. All right. So when this was introduced, it was the top of the line Chevy, top of the line Chevy Bel Air, and two door hard tops and convertibles was the purpose, I guess, for the Impala. I'm getting this stuff from Wikipedia, so I don't know. I'm just trying to decipher what someone else wrote. It was the first, I guess, Chevy would dual headlamps or maybe the first Bel Air with dual headlamps uh, it had coil spring suspension and an air ride uh, system was optional and then it could have been powered by 4.6 liter up to 5.7 liter V8s and this was the first big block V8 option available and that that engine would make 280 horsepower so there's the front end with the dual headlamps uh, 126,000 ish of the coupes were built, and that represented 15% of Chevrolet's production. And it also, this Impala helped Chevy regain the number one uh, selling position in uh, the United States. And uh, I guess in 1958 there was a recession, so I guess it makes sense. It's a pretty funky looking vehicle, so. I can see why people like it. All right, now let's get into this uh, actual model here. Let's see if I can close these doors properly. Uh oh. So this is a problem. This side is messed up. This door will not shut properly. I don't know if it's colliding with this frame here. Let's start on the other side. Okay, so this side of the vehicle looks looks nice and all. It's a metallic orange paint, so I like that. I like metallic paints over planes. It's got a nice flame job and it's print, tampo printed, no decals. Unfortunately, there's no extra paint for these like fake vents or the actual chrome trim. The chrome trim lines are they are casted in. There's just no additional 
silver pane, right? Even back here, you got some vent details. Actually, this is body colored on the real, real car. Uh, the door handles and the key lock mechanisms there, well, just the locks, they're, they're raised, uh, but again, no silver paint. But the uh, silver paint is here on the window frames for the molding, and also this door has a little plastic with silver on it as well. So, naturally you can see, this is a drag racing uh, <laughs> limousine. There's a V8 engine here in the back. There should be one in the front as well. And then, naturally, the door's open, which I guess I'll get to the other side since uh, that one's messed up anyways. So, the wheels are nice. They're aftermarket wheels. The, the rear ones look better because there's, like, black in these spokes, spoke openings, or they're just hollow. I'm not sure. The red line tire looks pretty good. It looks pretty round. The red, the line itself is round, and then the curvature of the sidewall is rounded as well, so that's nice. Now, there's something weird with the front. It's just all chrome, you know? For some reason, it doesn't have the black in there. But the tire looks good. Uh, the front tires have nice tread and look appropriate in size. The back are drag racing tires, which is nice tread as well. And then you got the cast line 2008 what the car is, so that's all nice. Two screws in the back and none in the front. I think there's a tab holding the front. It is a metal base, so it is quite heavy. And because it is so heavy, it's a smooth roller. Makes very little noise. Okay, well, going to the front end, we got this big plastic chromed bumper piece with the grill. Nice texture, but no paint here. Yeah, it's just all chrome, so a little paint wash might help the details there. The Caddy logo looks good enough. And then the, this little V is raised and painted silver. So the headlights are great because they're clear plastic and there's a nice silver surround of paint. And then the hood gap is pretty good on this one. Pretty tight. You know, there's no gap like that you see on a lot of castings these days, including M2. M2 is pretty bad with their QC now. But back in this one, it's not so bad. This gap is big though, but it has to be so the hood will clear it when it opens. Very easy to open. Seems it can stay up, but that engine just isn't worth looking at because it's all mostly black. It's just hard to see, right? There. So you need a flashlight to really appreciate the engine. There are molded, nice molded details and all, but I don't know. It just seems unnecessary. All that extra effort. It could have done easily without it, right? Especially considering there's an engine in the back already. All right, so the flame patterning here is looking nice as well. It's yellow to orange, and it's got like a blue outline. There's a ribbing here, and the kind of like casted in wiper blades, barely, kind of, sort of. The routed windshield looks okay, except for was some QC problems there. I don't know if that's glue or what. So yeah, back to this door, it's just a disaster. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it just got, well, even if it got rattled around in shipping, should be able to sit flush, right? Well, it is screwed together, so maybe later I'll try to modify it. Maybe there's just too much extra paint somewhere and it's keeping it from shutting tight. Or again. Alright. Well, let's look at that interior. Open up this rear door as well. So that's a suicide rear door. So the chrome roll cage is pretty neat. You know, it's a full on cage. It goes up under the roof. It's got verticals and hard, you know, cross members. It's a full cage. Uh, the steering wheel is pretty good, actually. There you go. And then, I'm not sure why, but there's a big television here, or monitor on the side. I guess maybe t computer information, but honestly, why wouldn't it be closer to the driver? There is a stick shift there. Hopefully you can see now. Yeah, there you go. There's a red fire canister there on the floor. Yeah, man. Well, there it is. I 
can't focus anymore though I'm using two hands already. The seat is chromed, that's kind of weird, but oh well. And then yeah, the engine here, I like that there's recesses for the exhaust. And then, uh, let's see the front end. Oh, it looks like there's like all the belts and pulleys and stuff like that are actually uh, black plastic. Oh, and there's actually a blower with red in there. That's actually impressive that they would get the red inside the, uh, the supercharger intake there. <laughs> so that's pretty impressive. Okay, so the doors seem to have casted in details too. Maybe it'd be easier just to look at these outside ones. Yeah, all right. So armrest, window wind down details. What about this back one? Yeah, yeah, not bad. It's all metal door. Yeah, really a mystery. Why wouldn't that... Yeah, all the three other ones close very, very well. I would rather just have no opening panels exactly for this reason, though. You know, it's just... I just like the look of this more. It's just nice and even. Nice, even panel lines. All right, well, this seems to be like a... It's not a third brake light, but there's some vents up here. And I think that that might be a decal, or is it tampo printed? I'm hoping that's tampo printed. Yeah. Dave Chang design. Okay. Silver around the rear window. Uh, the Chevrolet. Oh, there's actually a Cadillac before. It looks so much like Cadillac. I mean, come on. That does, Tell me that doesn't look like a Cadillac logo. But there actually is a Chevy bow tie on a Cadillac logo, it looks like. So my bad about earlier. Anyways, it's a Chevy. And this V thing is raised, although they didn't get enough silver paint on it. The taillights are nicely painted. You know, there's three, diff three different uh, apps there, whatever. Two colors. And it's nice that there's something in the license plate. This ribbing is pretty nice. It's a separate chrome plastic bumper. Oh boy, what's up with that? This is fresh out of the package, so... That's just QC. You know, must have been dropped at the factory or something. Oh well, I can't go back in time and yell at this factory worker in 2008 who messed this up. And then this one. Alright, well, let's move on then. I guess we should look at some other limos. I do have this cool 57 Bel Air, is it? Yeah, it does say 57 Bel Air from M2. It's got a starlight, like, black flake paint job. And then uh, my first M2 caddy here limo 59 cadillac it says this one just has regular tires in the rear because it's there's no rear engine it's not a drag one what i like about this one is there's no opening panels here in the doors right no problems well those still have the hood though which again i'd just rather not have because look at the hood now on this one see that gap that's not cool Ah, panel gaps, guys. We gotta all get away from it. If you want opening features, just get a bigger scale. And what, don't ruin all of 164 trying to make them 118 scale. It's just not possible. Alright, well, a bunch of big limos now. I seem to have three of the six castings here. Let's uh, lose these two. A couple other brands. I got this Auto World. It's a 58 Plymouth Fury. That should be true. 64. I got this Revell of an Impala from 1959. This is one of their lowriders. And then this other Auto World is a 66 Impala. It's an ultra red. Hmm. I wonder... No, I kind of feel like this might be a little too, too wide. I, I have a feeling it would be these three are rel relatively similar in width. And, I mean, these are Impalas, so this casting is bigger width-wise. Naturally, the length, who knows. But uh, I think it's out of scale. I think it's too big. Maybe, like, it's the one sixty sixty three or something. 
All right. So heavy. I'm not sure if this coaster thing will work. Get a jump start. All right, well, it's a... Uh, well, mine has QC problems, obviously. The big paint chip is a letdown. The door, if I'm lucky, I might be able to open it up and fix it. But that paint chip, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna match that paint, right? So that's a real shame. Can't blame the seller. Things brand new out of package, so I can only blame them too. And they seem to have bad quality back then and today. The brand needs to clean up its act. Well, uh, I guess I'll see you the next time I get one of these limousines in. So thanks for watching. We'll see you then.